Hey, welcome back. So with cells here, uh, what I want us to do is let's add some tabs here because I want us to be able to show the, the table view and the graph view on the other side so that we can add some graphs if you we want to. Uh, graphs do help to see the progress of your business. So we can add that too. Now, if we go to Bootstrap, since we're using Bootstrap, we go to the Bootstrap website, uh, we have navs here and I kind of like the nav bars that are like this. This one right here. Uh, yeah, but you can spend time here checking which navs you like. So let me just copy this one. Oh, I can just click copy there. Alrighty then. So let me close all the files I have here. Close all files. And let's go to the view for it's in the admin. Let's go to sales view. Alrighty then. So in sales view, we have this part. So this part is all the table, right? That's cool. That's cute. But right at the top here before, oh, this is table responsive, right? This whole thing belongs to the table. So above this, let me just paste my links. So save that and let's see what we've got just with that. I'll say refresh and there we go. So we have active, blah, blah, blah. We just need two of these, that's all. So here I need, uh, this one is active. So this is how you make the active one with the active class. So if I move this active class to the next one, you will notice that um, the next one will be active. So that's how it works. That's how you move to the next, just like that. So here, instead of active, we're going to say uh, table view. And down here, we're just going to say graph view. Okay. Pretty good. Now let's delete the others. We don't need them. We are home and dry. Okay. So navigation. Now these area current, current and area something something. These are for accessibility. If somebody is visually impaired, then uh, the reading thing is going to read and tell them this is the current page. Okay. So you may or may not need those. It's up to you. So there we go. We have table view. We have graph view. Now if I click on graph view, it doesn't change, of course, because uh, for this to change, I need to find a way to shift the active version to here, right? So I can do that using the query string and all that. We'll, we'll do that, no problem. But for now, let's leave it there. At least we have the tabs that we wanted. So there, and then if I click here, I should see graphs instead. Now, if you want some space between these two, you can put a break tag or maybe let's put an HR tag or something to separate the two. Doesn't look too good. So maybe a break tag was better. Yeah, at least we have a little space here. All right, then. Good. Now, for now, what I want us to do is just with the cells here, I want us, I wanted to show today's cells somewhere here. Okay. So let's run a query that will read all uh, records that were created today. So let's see how a query of that kind can be created. Now we can go to the uh, our database directly and go to the sales table. Now here you can try and test a few queries. So as you can see, when I click on this table, it runs a query that says select all from sales Okay, so which means I can run my own query here if I go to the SQL. This can be my practice round. So select all from cells where. Now I want a um, uh, all records that were created today. Now let me browse here and see what dates are involved. So today is the 17th and this was done on the 11th. So let's see how we can read from the 11th. Let's go down here. So here where we can say there's a thing, uh, 
Oh, so there's suggestions here actually. Day, hour, day, minute, day, second. Okay, so this is right there. You can see um, how to utilize those. So the problem we have is that the date, let me just click OK. The date has a lot going on here. There's, uh, there's um, hours, minutes, and seconds. There's also the day, the month, and the year. So I need a way to isolate just the day itself. So I can use the like uh, and say, just like as if I'm searching a string and then construct this particular date like this. But there's a better way to do it, which is where you say day, or you can say month, or you can say year. So in this case, I'll say where day okay and then i'm going to look for the date column i'm talking about and conveniently i called it date so where day date is equal to 11. so let's see if this works at all so let's go we know very well that uh, 11 is the day and there we go very good but today is 17th so if i edit in line and put 17th so i got all these results if i click 17th i get nothing Okay, very good. Oops, I've just destroyed my query. Oh no. Anyway, not a problem. I can construct it again. So day date is equal to 11, right? Now, this just putting the query like this is a problem because next month is also going to have a date equals to 11, right? Because the next month also has a day called 11. So we have to make sure that we're talking about exactly the same month. So I'm going to say and month date is equal to, and let's make sure it's two, right? So let's try that as well. again. Click. Okay, so things are working. Uh, that. Now also next year, we're going to have uh, a month two and day, day 11. So let's make sure we're talking about exactly the same year. So I'm going to put and year date is equal to 2022, 20, right? So let's go. So this makes it very specific to a particular date. So you can do the same thing with minutes and hours and etc. but we don't need that. We just need it to be something like this. So I'm just going to edit in line and copy the same content here. Maybe there's a copy button somewhere here. Create PHP code. No, it doesn't look like there's a copy. So anyway, copy. Let's come to our code and let's try and uh, read. So cells, where is this? Controller admin. Mm -hmm. So cells is right here. So this is what reads the cells, but let's say get today's cells total. So I just want the total for this. So I already have a query here constructed. So I'm just going to paste like that. Oops. Mm -hmm. So I need all the records for today. So this should do. But what I really need are the totals because I just want to calculate the total. So that way I can limit the data that I re return. So I'll say select total, right? Now, I think there's a way to, to sum up this data. I don't know, I've never tried this. Let's go back to our SQL and edit in line. So let's say select total like this and then go. You see that we only get one column, but let's edit in line again. Let's say sum like this. Okay. And go. Okay. So it does return a sum, which is very nice, right? But the column name is sum total, which is not very nice. So let's edit this and change this with an alias. We're going to say select sum total as, so that the column name is changed, as, let's just call it sum. 
or if you want you can call it total it's entirely up to you so go you see that now the column is named total whatever alias you add here i could add some like so and uh, go it will be some so at least it works like that so let's do this uh, go back and say select total let's put some there let's give it an alias as total okay so there we go so that's our query right there which is very nice now i don't want this fixed to a particular uh specific date right so let's create these values ourselves so i'm going to say year is equal to date and let's create a year so like, as you remember when we're creating a date we put these uh, values y m d like this each one of these represents a day month or year so let me just get the year like this and duplicate this twice so this one is the month and this one is the day so of course uh, small d small m and so on okay to know what values to put here you can go to php.net and look at the date function Okay, so once we have this, we can then run a query like this. Cells uh, total, let's do that. Cells total is equal to that, and let's run the query. Very good, okay. Let me remove these back ticks don't like them much and in here we're just going to replace the day now since these are numbers we don't really need to put uh, brackets around them so that's still okay and uh, year very cool mm -hmm. and so the sales class query and then let's run that query and if things came back good <clears throat> okay so wait a minute how is the result uh -huh. Uh -huh. so i'm going to say if sales class no if sales total sorry Uh, what we would do is sales total is going to be equal to this. Let's get the first row and let's get the total because that's the alias we assigned it as. So sales total should be a thing at this point. Copy. Now this is not good. Uh, let me do this. Duplicate. Let me say sales total is equal to zero right because it's possible this won't work out so we need a backup number at least so this let me remove this and just say st for some reason and put st here as well and st here as well so short for sales total and if you found a result get that result then we reserve sales total itself for the integer in the cells view so right here on the table what i want to do is at the very top i'm just going to add a div and i can put the cells total and close it so back here let's see what we've got uh oh i can't see anything what is going on? Hmm. What's happening? Okay. Back to admin. Sales total. Sales. Okay. Everything seems okay. Let me remove that. What's happening? Okay, hmm, 
let me do show sales total here just so or maybe let me use var dump that way to show me the type data type as well so it's no that's why okay so which means it jumped from zero to no which means here uh so maybe it's the zero that's the problem okay that didn't do much let's undo and let me let me get st let me see what it wrote back save refresh okay so it brought back an array now i can't see it clearly so let me use show just so we can see what's going on inside all right so it brought back total which is empty hmm okay so it seems if there are no records because there are no records for this day it means the total comes back as a no instead of a zero so what we can do to fix this problem is we can do this if it's no we can use the no safe operator to make sure that we add a zero so I'll put double question mark and put a zero there and this should solve the problem so if I now refresh I get a zero there that's nice so instead let me come back here and instead of this div let's add this to h2 or maybe h1 i don't know i'm gonna say two days total and then put whatever currency you want there and then let's use number format here uh, i'll say number format and wrap the sales total in that Let's put a comma and put two for two decimal places like that. So refresh. There we go. Two days total. There we go. Zero, zero, zero. All right. So now we just need to test if today's total is correct. So let's add some new cells for today. Just something simple. $20. Checkout. Let's put 30. Enter. And there we go. So at least we have some cells today. Go to the admin and let's go to sales and you see we have twenty dollars for today very good okay at least now we are even getting a user id there very cool all right now um let's do something more with the sales section here and make it more user friendly <laughs> 